Good morning all. I am Professor Bhavna Kimsara. Today we are going to see the topic EJB that is Enterprise Java Pins. The outline of EJB is overview, types of EJB, benefits of EJB, architecture of EJB, EJB technology. EJB stands for Enterprise Java Pins. EJB is an essential part of JEE platform that is Java to Enterprise Edition platform. EJB provides an architecture to develop and deploy components based enterprise application considering robustness, high scalability and high performance. Basically, EJB is used when you want to create a big enterprise level of application. So when to use a EJB? Very first, application needs remote access. In other words, when your application is distributed. Second is when your application needs to be scalable. So EJB supports such kind of application by load balancing, clustering and failover. Third, when your application needs encapsulated business logic where you want to separate the presentation layer and persistent layer, means your business logic should be separated with your presentation logic. Second is different types of EJBs. EJB is divided in three parts. One is session bin, second is message bin, third is entity bin. Further, Session bin are divided in again two parts, stateless and stateful. Message bin is not divided in any further. And entity bins are further divided in two parts, bin managed persistent, that is BMP, and container managed persistent, that is CMP. A small description of all these three types is session bin. Session bin stores data for a particular user for a single session. So when a single session is started between client and server, it stores the data of that particular user. But again, it is depend on is it a stateful or stateless. It is a less resource intensive as compared to entity bins. Session bins get destroy as soon as user session terminates. Second is entity bin. Entity bin represent persistent data storage. So here you see the difference in session bin. Whenever your session get over, your data is destroyed. But in entity bin, your data is stored persistently. User data is saved in a data saved to database via entity bin and later on can be retrieved from the database in the entity bin. Third is a message bin. Message bin used in the context of JMS that is Java messaging services when you just want to send a message then it is going to be used. Now you see each bin in detail session bin in that the first part is stateless session bin it is a business object that represent business logic only it does not have a data so in stateless there is only a core of business logic but it does not store any data about the user or client in other words conventional state between multiple methods can call is not maintained by the container in case of stateless session bin. The stateless bin objects are pulled by EJB container to service the request on demand. It can be accessed by one client at a time and a notation used for stateless Session bin is at the rate session stateless. Second is stateful session bin. So in this, apart from your business logic, it also maintains the data. So when a user login, 
it maintains the state of data the example of this can be your shopping cart so where when you log in it maintains your session it also stores your likes or the purchase history etc so in online shopping cart you can use the stateful session bins and annotation used is at the rate stateful again multiple method call is maintained by container in the stateful session bin third is a message driven bin a message driven bin is a bin that contains business logic but it is invoked by passing a message so just by passing a message that business logic is get invoked so it is very similar to jms receiver it is an asynchronous service that means asynchronously asynchronously receives the message and process it if you see in this example a application running on client machine sends a message so that message it gets stored in a queue then one by one this message is delivered to the java double e server in that it is handled by ejb container and inside ejb container it is handled by message driven bins the next is entity bins entity bins are persistent bin where data is stored in the database the main example of entity bins are your transaction banking transaction where security is required login state of your user and all the transaction related history you have to store so it is divided in two part one is container managed persistent and second is bin managed persistent in first one container managed persistent the ejb manages data by saving it to a designated resources normally database so here data is stored in the database here the data is managed by callback method so there is no database only callback methods are used again in this you must define data that the container is to manage with deployment descriptor the container manages the data by saving it to the database and this all the logic of storing data to your persistent storage must be included in the ejb store method and reload from your storage in the ejb load the container invokes this method when it is necessary next what are the benefits of ejb it is a simplified development of large scale enterprise level application when the application you are designing is a very large scale then you have to think for ejb application server container provides most of the system level services like that means when your application want transaction handling logging load balancing persistent mechanism of storing your data exception handling and so on then next ejb developer just focus on business logic and on solving the business problem because business logic lies in ejb so front end developer can focus on presentation of client interfaces the client developer does not have to code the routines that implement business rule or access database so that means you can divide your developer in two part one who is going to develop only for client side that means front end design and second who is code for a business rule or business logic now the clients can also run on server small devices java bins are portable components which enables the java application assembler to build new application from existing java bin so reusability is an important benefit of ejb 
Now the architecture of EJB. In architecture, there are four components. One is EJB client, then database, EJB server, and here, sorry, it is not EJB client. It is EJB container, where the different Java bins are available, like enterprise Java bins, can be session or message driven or entity bins. So all these bins are stored in the EJB bin. So sorry, it's a EJB container. So there are four components like EJB server, EJB container, enterprise bins and EJB clients and others auxiliary systems like JNDI services etc. So EJB server is the outermost part of the architecture. It manages the EJB container, means EJB container is inside the EJB server. It provides the runtime environment to the client. It provides the different services like process and thread management, system resource management, database connection, pooling and catching. Next is EJB container. EJB container contains the different enterprise bins like it contains session bins, message bins and entity bins. So all types of bins are stored in the EJB container. It also provides the different services like naming, lifestyle management, persistent data storage, transaction management and security. Third is the EJB client. EJB client actually interacts with the EJB container EJB client is a local program which can call and operate remote bins. Client locates an EJB through JNDI service. We will see the JNDI service in the next video. Now EJB technology. EJB is a server side component architecture for Java platform. It is an enterprise edition of Java. EJB technology enables rapid and simplified development of distributed, transactional, secure, and portable applications based on Java technology. So this is all about for this video. We'll see the JNDI lookup in the next video.